building process of Maya pyramids was an incredible display of engineering. So let's analyze what was the complete process of building this historical ancient buildings. The Maya civilization, known for its advanced knowledge in fields like astronomy, mathematics, and architecture, has left behind an impressive legacy of architectural marvels, the most notable of which are the Maya pyramids. The architectural design of Maya pyramids was an intricate process that fused utilitarian need, aesthetic sensibilities, and deep-rooted spiritual beliefs. Each pyramid, in essence, was an architectural embodiment of the Maya's sophisticated understanding of geometry, their complex cosmology, and their cultural symbolism. The Maya had an astute sense of geometry and proportions, which is reflected in their pyramidal structures. The design usually involved a stepped rectangular platform as the base, upon which multiple tires or platforms were erected, each progressively smaller than the one below. The outcome was a terraced pyramid with a striking visual rhythm. These structures ranged from relatively modest single-story platforms to monumental multi-tired pyramids. The proportions of the pyramids were calculated with precision. The height of the pyramid, the dimensions of the base, the number of tires, and the inclination of the walls. Each aspect adhered to predefined ratios and measurements, which ensured the pyramid's structural stability while satisfying aesthetic and symbolic needs. For instance, the Temple of Inscriptions in Palenque is designed with a near-perfect ratio of height to base width, highlighting their advanced knowledge in geometric principles. With that, the Maya were adept astronomers, and this knowledge profoundly influenced the design of their pyramids. The placement orientation and even the dimensions of the pyramids were often correlated with celestial events like the solstices, equinoxes, or the movements of specific stars and planets. Such alignments allowed these structures to serve as grand astronomical observatories. An example of this is the El Castillo Pyramid at Chichen Itza. During the equinoxes, the setting sun casts a shadow on the pyramid staircase, creating the illusion of a serpent slithering down, a phenomenon believed to signify the descent of the feathered serpent god, Kukulkanki. The Maya pyramids were not merely physical structures. They were also symbolic representations of the Maya's spiritual and cultural beliefs. For instance, the step design was thought to symbolize the levels of the cosmos, the underworld, the earthly plane, and the heavens. The staircases, often placed on the pyramid's western side, held significant religious importance. They symbolized the path leading from the earthly plane to the celestial realm. Temples or sanctuaries were typically constructed at the top, and it was here that priests performed religious ceremonies, effectively bridging the gap between the human and divine realms. It is important to note that the choice of materials and their preparation were vital aspects of pyramid construction, requiring both practical wisdom and intricate craftsmanship. The primary material for the construction of Maya pyramids was limestone. This sedimentary rock was in abundance in the Yucatan Peninsula and surrounding regions, making it a practical choice for large-scale construction. Limestone was ideal for the pyramids not just due to its availability, but also because of its workability. It was soft enough to be shaped and carved, but hard enough to provide structural integrity to the pyramids. Another key advantage of limestone was its versatility. The Maya could create a variety of architectural elements from limestone, ranging from large structural blocks to delicate decorative pieces. The fine-grained variety of limestone was often reserved for the creation of intricate relief carvings and statues, which adorned the temples atop the pyramids and their surrounding areas. The extraction and preparation of limestone was a labor-intensive process. The quarrying of limestone was done using tools made of harder stones or possibly even with wooden tools embedded with sharper stones. A common technique involved heating the stone with fire and then rapidly cooling it with water, which caused the stone to crack. Once the limestone was separated from the quarry face, it was then broken down into smaller blocks. The shaping of these blocks was a task of great skill. Using harder stones as tools, the Maya stonemasons would painstakingly shape each block to the required size and form. They achieved remarkable precision and consistency, as evidenced by the near, perfect alignment of stones in the pyramid. The stones were usually laid without mortar, relying on their weight and precise fitting to hold them in place. For the more decorative elements, such as reliefs and statues, the limestone would be carved with intricate detail, showcasing the Maya's artistic capabilities. These decorative features often depicted scenes from Maya mythology, representations of their gods or glyphs, the written language of the Maya. 
Additionally, the construction of the Maya pyramids was an arduous task that required substantial human labor, efficient organization, and an impressive level of coordination. The entire process showcased the Maya's administrative prowess and their capacity to mobilize and manage resources. The construction of a Maya pyramid involved a diverse array of workers, each with specific roles and responsibilities. The architects were responsible for planning the structure and overseeing its construction. They would draft the designs, calculate the required measurements, and decide on the optimal location and orientation of the pyramid. The masons and other laborers performed the more physically demanding tasks, such as quarrying the limestone, shaping the stone blocks, transporting them to the construction site, and assembling the structure. These workers required substantial strength and endurance, but also a high degree of skill to ensure the precision required in crafting and aligning the stones. Artisans and sculptors were entrusted with the task of creating the ornate carvings, glyphs, and statuaries that adorned the pyramids. Their work was critical in adding the finishing touches that transformed these structures from mere buildings into works of art and symbols of Maya spiritual and cultural identity. Managing such a diverse labor force required effective organization. The entire process was likely overseen by a group of elite administrators who would coordinate the various teams, ensure the supply of materials, and maintain the construction schedule. The transportation of materials from the quarries to the construction site was a complex logistical challenge. Without the aid of beasts of burden or wheel-based transport, the Maya relied on human labor for transportation. Stones were likely carried on sledges or rafts, and the process would have required careful coordination to ensure a steady supply of material. What's more, the labor involved in the construction of the pyramids wasn't merely physical. It was also imbued with spiritual significance. The construction of a pyramid was often accompanied by rituals and ceremonies to seek the gods' favor and protection. These rituals were an integral part of the construction process, further binding the community together and reinforcing their shared cultural and religious beliefs. Also, the sheer scale and intricacy of these pyramids have ignited an array of theories about how they were built, each fascinating and plausible in its own right. One of the most prevailing theories regarding the construction of the Maya pyramids is the lever and ramp theory. It suggests that the Mayans capitalized on the laws of physics, specifically the mechanical advantage provided by levers and inclined planes to move massive stones and other building materials. Levers, one of the six classical simple machines identified by Renaissance scientists, can be a potent tool to magnify force. The principle operates on a fulcrum, or pivot point, with the force being applied on one end to lift or move a load on the other end. It's theorized that the Mayans may have used wooden levers to lift the heavy stones off the ground. After placing the stones onto a wooden sled or similar apparatus, they could then be transported closer to the construction site. The second part of this theory involves the use of ramps, another type of simple machine. An inclined plane or ramp reduces the force required to elevate an object to a certain height. By decreasing the angle of the incline, less force is required, making it easier to transport heavy loads upwards. After placing the stones onto sleds, it's proposed that Mayan workers would pull these sleds up dirt ramps that spiraled around the pyramids as they increased in height. This system would allow for the consistent and methodical placement of stones, gradually building up the pyramid layer by layer by layer. What's more, the lever and ramp theory is bolstered by evidence of similar techniques used in other ancient civilizations such as the Egyptians in their construction of the pyramids at Giza. While it's a straightforward explanation, this theory would still require a significant labor force and an understanding of basic physics, attesting to the remarkable engineering skills of the Mayan people. The sonotubular drill theory presents an interesting approach to understanding the construction of the Mayan pyramids, specifically focusing on the precise stone-cutting methods employed by the Mayans. This theory posits that the Mayans used an ancient form of a drill, known as a sonotubular drill, to bore holes into the stones used for construction. The sonotubular drill would have been constructed using readily available natural materials. The body of the drill could be made from strong, hollow plant stems or reeds, hence the names anotubular, from the Greek words for sound and tube. The drill would then be loaded with an abrasive material, such as sand, grit, or small pieces of hard stone, which would act as the cutting surface. To use the sonotubular drill, the Mayans would place the abrasive, filled tube against the stone and rotate it back and forth. The abrasive material would slowly but surely grind away at the stone, 
allowing the Mayans to shape and carve the stone with precision. This tool would have enabled them to create the tightly fitted stone blocks seen in the pyramids and to carve detailed images and glyphs into the stone. Supporters of the sonotubular drill theory point to the incredible precision and tight joints in the masonry of the Mayan pyramids as evidence. The stones are often so finely cut that it's difficult or even impossible to fit a piece of paper between them, suggesting the use of advanced stone, cutting techniques like the sonotubular drill. Furthermore, the Maya are a group of native people from Mexico and Central America. They have lived in the regions that now include Yucatan, Quintana Roo, Campeche, Tabasco, and Chiapas in Mexico, as well as parts of Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, and Honduras. The name Maya comes from Mayapan, an ancient city in Yucatan that was the last capital of a Mayan kingdom during the post-classic period. The Maya identify themselves based on their ethnicity and language, like the Quiche in the south or Yucatec in the north. But there are others too. People have been fascinated by the mysterious Maya since they were first encountered by John Aloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood in the 1840s. However, much of their culture is not so mysterious once we understand it. Contrary to what many people think, the Maya did not disappear. Their descendants still live in the same areas where their ancestors once thrived. They continue to practice many of the same rituals, though some have evolved over time. If a person from a thousand years ago visited these lands today, they would recognize some of the traditions still being followed. During the Classic period, the Maya civilization reached its peak and achieved remarkable cultural advancements that they are famous for. The Maya had a strong belief in the cycle of life. They thought that nothing was ever truly born or died. This belief influenced their understanding of gods and the universe. Their ideas about the cosmos, in turn, inspired their creativity in areas like architecture, mathematics, and astronomy. According to their cosmology, below the earth was a dark realm called Exabalba, pronounced as Shibalba, Ba, which means place of fear. From this realm, the great tree of life grew, stretching from the underworld through 13 levels into the heavens, leading to the paradise called Tamuanchen, meaning place of the misty sky where beautiful flowers bloom. The Maya believed that after death, a person's journey didn't end up in a traditional heaven or hell. Instead, it involved traveling toward Tamuanchen. This journey started in the dangerous and treacherous underworld of Exabalba, where the Exabalbans who lived there were more likely to deceive and harm souls than to help them. If someone could successfully navigate through Exabalba, they could then make their way through the nine levels of the underworld and the 13 levels of the higher world to reach paradise. There were a few ways to bypass Exabalba and instantly go to Tamuanchan. Dying during childbirth, being a sacrificial victim, dying in warfare, or on the ball court, or through suicide. They had a goddess named Ixtab who was associated with suicide and was depicted as a decaying woman hanging by a noose in the heavens. Once a person reached Tamuanchan, they would experience eternal happiness. It's important to mention that the Maya believed that this paradise was not in the sky, but rather on the earth. After ascending through the 13 levels, one wouldn't live in the air but on a mystical mountain on the planet. Because of this cyclical worldview, the Maya didn't view human sacrifice as something wrong. Those who were offered as sacrifices to the gods didn't really die but moved on to another phase of existence. This belief influenced all aspects of the Mayan civilization, and rituals were regularly performed in caves to evoke the darkness of Exabalba, and on hills or high temples that symbolize the heights of Timonchan. The impressive pyramids found at various Mayan sites are actually modeled after the sacred mountain of the gods called Witzo. The Maya calendar, well known for its cyclical nature, well known for its cyclical nature, reflects the continuous pattern of human existence. The different gods and goddesses depicted in Mayan art served specific functions in guiding or obstructing individuals through the cycles of life. A significant religious text of the Quiche Maya, known as the Popol, Vu, narrates the story of the hero twins, Hunapu and Exbalanque. Their tale emphasizes the cyclic nature of life and how they triumphed over the forces of chaos and darkness represented by the lords of Exabal. The twins' famous game, Pak a Tak, also plays a similar role in conveying this concept. Pak a Tak was the most popular game among the Maya, but it was much more than just a game to them. It had deep symbolic meaning, reflecting their view of human struggle and existence. 
The game was played by two teams, each with seven players, on a ball court. The aim was to score a small rubber ball through a vertical hoop on the wall using only their hips, shoulders, head, and knees. No hands or feet were allowed. The players moved so quickly that it was said to be like watching lightning strikes, according to the Spanish bishop Diego de Landa. In the past, it was believed that the losing team or their captain would be killed at the end of the match. However, recent findings from decoding Mayan glyphs and archaeological evidence suggest that it might have been the winning team or their captain who was given the honor of a quick death and direct passage to paradise. The game symbolized not only the hero twin's victory over darkness, but also the cyclical nature of life. Some modern interpretations claim that the Maya sacrificed the winners to offer a perfect gift to the gods, but there's no concrete evidence to support this theory in ancient or historical sources. Nevertheless, glyphs at various ball courts, including Chichen Itza, seem to suggest that the winning team or captain might have been sacrificed. Contemporary Mayan daykeepers from Altun Ha in Belize and Chichen Itza in the Yucatan point to the hope of escaping the darkness of Exabalba as the reason for the winners being executed. The ball game held deep meaning for the Maya beyond being just a spectator sport. As more hieroglyphics are discovered and deciphered, we learn more about the specifics of the game and the lives of the ancient Maya in general. The challenge of understanding Mayan hieroglyphics today is partly because of Bishop Diego de Landa, who unintentionally preserved much of what we know about the Maya civilization. After the Spanish conquered the north, Landa was sent to the Yucatan in 1549 and His main goal was to eradicate any non-Christian beliefs among the Mayans who had converted to Christianity. The Maya were already familiar with the concept of a god who dies and is resurrected, as they had their own deity called the Maze God. So, they didn't find it difficult to accept the story of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Despite this, Landa believed that there was a group among the Maya trying to lure them back to their old idolatrous ways. When his attempts to stop this perceived rebellion through prayer and warnings failed, he resorted to a more direct approach. On July 12, 1562, Ed, at the church in Mani, Bishop Diego de Landa burned more than 40 Mayan books known as codices along with over 20,000 images and stone monuments called steel. He explained that these materials contained superstitions and devilish tricks, so he decided to destroy them, much to the sadness of the indigenous people. Landa didn't stop there. He also resorted to torture to uncover the secrets of those he believed were rebelling against the church's teachings. His methods were strongly criticized by other priests, and as a result, he was called back to Spain to justify his actions. In his defense, he wrote a book called Relacion de las Cosas de Yucatan in 1566 ad, which interestingly preserved much of the Maya culture, religion, and language that he had tried to eradicate. This book has turned out to be a valuable resource in understanding the ancient Maya civilization. During the burning in Mani, only three books of the Maya survived, the Madrid Codex, the Dresden Codex, and the Paris Codex. These codices were later found in cities like Madrid, Dresden, and Paris, and they have been a valuable source of knowledge for scholars, particularly regarding the beliefs and calendar of the Maya. The codices were meticulously created by scribes who closely observed astronomy. For instance, the Dresden Codex dedicates six pages to accurately calculating the rise and positions of Venus. Their interpretations of the planets and seasons show an extraordinary level of accuracy that surpasses other ancient civilizations. In the present time, the Maya people still cultivate the same lands and follow the same river routes as their ancestors did, stretching from the Yucatan in the north to Honduras. It is incorrect and offensive to say that the Maya disappeared simply because some of, the, because some of their ancient cities were abandoned. In reality, over 6 million Maya individuals are still carrying forward the traditions of their forebears. Even though the region was Christianized during the 16th century through conquest and inquisition, the old ways persist blending European Catholicism with Mayan mysticism. Village day keepers still interpret the energy of each day keepers still interpreted in caves and on hills. On Cozumel Island, shrines to both the Virgin Mary and the goddess Ixchel are often seen as interchangeable or even one and the same. A lot has been discovered about the Maya since the days when Stevens and Catherwood explored and documented the ancient ruins. However, for the present day, Maya, nothing of importance has ever been forgotten, and the cycle of life continues as it always has. Moreover, the pyramids, particularly those like El Castillo at Chichen Itza or Temple I at Atal, 
stand as testaments to the ingenuity and advanced engineering abilities of the ancient Maya civilization. Two voices prominent in the study of these structures and their possible origins are Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson. Their theories and interpretations have sparked considerable interest and debate within the field. Graham Hancock is renowned for his unconventional theories regarding ancient civilizations, particularly the lost civilization hypothesis. This theory suggests the existence of a highly advanced global civilization, lost to time, that might have influenced the development of other civilizations, including the Maya. Hancock argues that the Maya pyramids' precise architectural design and their astronomical alignments suggest knowledge transfer from this lost civilization. He has pointed to the mathematical precision and astronomical knowledge embedded in these structures, far beyond what we'd expect for the time. For example, El Castillo is famously known for its alignment to the sun during the spring and autumn equinoxes, creating a visual effect of a serpent descending the pyramid, a level of precision indicating a deep understanding of astronomical cycles. Randall Carlson, on the other hand, has devoted his life to investigating the intersection of geology, archaeology, and astronomy. Like Hancock, he also leans towards theories outside conventional archaeological interpretation. Carlson points to the geomorphic evidence left by cataclysmic events like floods and comet impacts to suggest that ancient civilizations had more advanced knowledge than is traditionally accepted. He proposes that the advanced architectural and mathematical knowledge demonstrated in the construction of the Maya pyramids might have been influenced by these cataclysmic events, leading to the rapid development and subsequent fall of the Maya civilization. In this context, Carlson often references the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, a theory suggesting a comet impact about 12,800 years ago led to global environmental changes affecting ancient civilizations. He proposes the Maya, like other civilizations, encoded this knowledge into their architecture as a form of historical record, a means to pass on their experience to future generations. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.